And let's see. Oh, no, no, stop, stop, stop. Oh, no, we haven't recorded yet. Hello, hello. Welcome. So we will hit the cloud recording here on Zoom. Welcome to Clear Vision Wednesday. I am Claudia Mühlenweg. I'm a natural vision improvement teacher. And I'm here to talk today about peripheral vision, which is so often totally underappreciated and ignored, especially if we wear these things. I don't have any, but these things called glasses. And I have a few slides for you that we want to go over first before I share some practices and some strategies, how you can actually improve your peripheral vision. So let, we do want to talk a little bit about anatomy, just so that you 100% um, understand what I'm talking about. So let me um, share my screen. Hold on, I should actually, yeah, I'm just going to share my screen. So hopefully you should see my screen and I will do, I will play, let me get rid of the Zoom bar and I will play my slideshow. All right, so the topic today is see clearly through opening the peripheral field. And I wanna make sure that everybody can see and hear me. Okay, sounds good. Um, so how relaxation is the foundation for both. It's really, yeah, let's dive into this. Let's dive into this. So. My first thing is I, I do want to make sure I have a medical disclaimer that I'm an educator. I do not replace traditional vision care. It's super important that you do see your eye doctor um, for, for eye care and the health of your eyes. This is education so that you make better decisions about your vision. And it's based on my research over the years and any experts that have contributed. So I just want to say that ahead of time. So let's look a little bit at, so you've probably all seen these diagrams of the eye. And the center of our retina is called the fovea. And that's kind of, you've probably seen these diagrams where the light rays get bundled and broken by the cornea and the lens. But basically this is the area of perfect clarity. And it's a very, very tiny spot about the size of a pinhead. It's literally 1% of the retinal space. And it has, it's, it uses 50% of our brain processing. So, this is the area when you focus on something, let's say you look at an eye of a friend, you're looking at that eye and that specific, maybe even the black spot of that eye, the, the pupil inside. So, and then this is where you see best. I did a whole presentation on central focus that you can view on my channel. So we're not gonna go too much into that, but that's basically where your vision is best, where it's clearest and sharpest also. So that's the phobia. And this is a, a tray I just like to use as an example. So see that little black dot in the middle. So think of the phobia as being this tiny black dot that you see there. And the red area is around the macula. So you still see better in that area than let's say with those blue dots on the outside, right? If you look at that center, you wouldn't be able to see those blue dots on the outside. You will know there is blue dots, there are blue dots, but you cannot see them clearly. So, and this is another image, um, basically the phobia in the eye is actually not in the center, just because we have two eyes and they work together in most cases. So the phobia is a little off center, but that's not so important for our discussion today. So let's look a little bit at peripheral vision. We often think of peripheral vision at that, as that far outer periphery on the very edges, on the sides, on the top, on the bottom but literally everything that's not exactly in the phobia and that center of vision and that central clarity or central fixation, that is all considered peripheral vision. So like I said earlier with the tray, of course the near periphery we see better than the mid periphery and especially the far outer periphery, right? So I think we can all agree that things that are closer to let's say you look at a friend's eye, you will see that other eye better than maybe that chin or maybe their chest or something else, or maybe their feet, you know, you might still see that feet, but they're obviously way farther out of your central region of focus. And just a little bit more anatomy we have, you probably might've heard of this. We have two basic, basic photoreceptor cells that are called rods and cones. And cones are the ones that give us that color vision, that give us that sharpness. And you see that little picture here in the phobia, we only have cones in the macula. There's no other cells, only cones. And they do come in red, blue, and green, right? Because that's how we see the different colors. And the, so that's what the, the center of your vision is. And then at the outer, outer edges of your outer peripheral vision in your retina, you only have rod cells, those shown in yellow here. And rod cells 
are very light sensitive, but they do not see clearly. They might, their visual acuity is probably less than 100, 20 over 100. And they, and they also don't see colors. So they have no color perception. So if you go back to my tray image here, so, you know, again, the tray is not that big here, but just know that in the center is, it's all cone cells. And then in the outer edges where the blue dots are right now, those would all be rod cells. And in the middle space, in that near and middle periphery, you have a kind of uh, a mix of rod and cone cells. But the further, further out you go, there's basically no more cone cells of the outer retina. So that's why, and this is from a website for pilots, that's why our best clarity during the day is in that central vision, in that central vision and the near periphery. That's our best vision during the day. And I do wanna say, you've all seen, this is obviously a Christmas tree, and even though we're in the middle of summer, but what I wanna show here, what we've all seen are these diagrams, right? You've seen these diagrams, there's the tree, then your cornea breaks the light, way, uh, the light and then the lens breaks the light, and then the image is projected upside down. But what's wrong with this image is that you would not see that whole tree in your central focus, in your fovea. It would be more like, look at this little circle. Maybe you look at this one Christmas ornament and yes, you see all the other ones in your periphery, but what you would really see in your fovea, and you know, this is missing the rest of the tree, but you would really only see that little Christmas ornament or maybe the top of the tree that you're looking at in your fovea sharply and then I've, you know, I would have to paint in the rest. The rest of the tree is kind of uh, dispersed around the rest of the retina. So I hope that makes sense, but we really have a very small area of sharp vision um, in, our, in our fovea. And at night, it's the other way around. So at night, we use our rod cells because our cone cells are not very light sensitive. And as long as there's any light, they work, but if there's no more light, Let's say there's a moonless night, you're out in the, in the middle of nowhere, there's no light pollution. We only have those rod cells. And that's why they say all oh, cats are gray at night. We don't see any color at night. You can test this, you know, maybe go on a night walk and notice how colors slowly fade until we only see black and white at night. And those rod cells are 100,000 times more light sensitive. So they are, they give us that night vision, but they are not ever going to produce clear vision, color vision, or sharp visual acuity, unless there is some kind of light, the moon, street signs, or other light. So at night, and again, this is from this website from, for pilots, at night, we actually see better in the peripheral vision than at, in the center. And you can actually test this when you go, if you ever go out and you have a night sky, and maybe you live somewhere where there's no light pollution. When you look at a star, and um, maybe a one that's a little bit dimmer, and you know you look directly at it you don't actually you might not even notice it unless you shift your attention a little bit to the side of that star and then you suddenly see it better because again at night we actually see better with, with these rod cells and the reason i'm talking about day and night vision here is because those rod cells are also our peripheral vision cells so basically at the outer periphery you have used the exact same cells that you use at night and that's why at at, uh, at night and during the day in our, our outer periphery, we do not have color vision or uh, any clarity, really. It's a pretty blurry experience. So I want to switch gears a little bit into this idea of opening the peripheral vision. And um, Jacob Lieberman, you might have heard of him. He's an optometrist, and he really fixed his own eyesight. And he wrote several books, great books. And he talks about this concept of open focus. And the idea of open focus is not what a lot of you might be doing, especially when you wear glasses, where you try to see like all these trees clear at once, which is anatomically impossible, like we just learned. But open focus is that idea that you have more of a, you're aware of that whole space. You're aware of all these trees. You let your eyes move freely, but you're not putting your mental attention, because mental attention and visual attention is connected, right? You're not mentally focused on there's this one tree, or maybe you're doing a scavenger hunt and maybe you're looking for, you know, like a little arrow on one of the trees and you're really exactly focusing your. So open focus is more like, I don't like the word soft gaze, um, but it's more like you're not focusing on one tree in particular. Your eyes will still be pointing somewhere and you still will see that tree better than the other trees, but you're not mentally focused on this is the tree I'm focusing on. 
I hope that makes sense. It's kind of this feel, it's a really a feeling, it's, it's a proprioceptive experience where you're really aware of that whole world around you and maybe even behind you and also yourself in that forest in this example. Let's say you're in the forest. You're aware of yourself standing in this forest and you're almost an observer of yourself. So you have that really, all these different layers, but that's kind of what open focus, what Jacob Lieberman describes as this idea. And to have this open focus, to have this really huge panoramic awareness. And again, it's not going to be clear, but you have that, you see all these trees, right? That IMAX experience that requires relaxation. And I don't have slides for this, but what I do want to say is that when we are stressed out, our peripheral vision shuts down, our pupils dilate, we cannot have that peripheral awareness. So it's really based on being relaxed. And best central vision is also when we are relaxed. Even though when we focus on something mentally, we are in a little bit, and I, I don't have slides for the nervous system, but when you, let's backtrack. When you're relaxed, you're in the parasympathetic nervous system state. You might've heard that rest and digest, relax, that's kind of the, the state. And that's when you have peripheral vision. When you focus on something, especially when you convert your eyes, when you focus on something you know, closer up, that's not far, far away, your eyes converge and you create, you're moving into this sympathetic state. But that doesn't mean that you're necessarily stressed out. You're just focused. And when we are more focused mentally, we are in a little bit of a sympathetic nervous system state, especially when we look up close. Now that doesn't mean that there's all these layers, right? You can be in fight or flight extreme level, you can freeze and panic. So basically what I'm saying is you're moving into that more of a sympathetic arousal state, but you are still relaxed when you have perfect clarity, you're not stressed out. So your pupils might dilate a tiny bit, but not to the point where you have complete stress. So one thing that's really affecting your peripheral vision is glasses, because not only do they have a frame, right? That kind of, it's almost like a camera, right? When you look through a viewfinder, when you, when you take a picture, even mentally or actually taking a picture, you always crop, right? There's always a crop of your image. You, you never, unless you do a panoramic image with your phone and you kind of go in a circle, there's always a crop, like a certain, you know, frame. But the glasses even shrink your peripheral field more because not only do they trick you to believe that you know everything looks clear because that's what glasses can do for you and you don't really use your fovea vision for clarity, but you also think, oh, everything beyond the glasses is blurry when in reality, it is blurry for everybody. That's how our vision functions, but you might totally ignore that peripheral just because of the frame, because of that distortion also, which you don't see so much in this image, but glasses distort your, your view. If you're nearsighted, everything is smaller shrunk down. If you're farsighted, everything is enlarged. So there is a disconnect between what you see through the glasses and the actual world around you, not just in terms of clarity, but also in terms of distortion level. So that's why glasses really, like in order to improve your, your peripheral vision, you really need to do as much as possible without glasses. And even the frameless glasses, right? This one, this girl here has thick frames, but even the frameless glasses, again, they make you think that everything where the glasses is clear and everything outside is really blurry. When in reality, even where you look through your glasses, only the where your phobia is pointing, do you have clarity? So I hope that makes sense. But glasses are major contributors. So in that regard, contacts are the better option. Um, if you want to, like contacts have the disadvantage that you're not taking them out because again, diopters, this is too much for this lesson, but diopters only correct you for one distance. And ideally, when we want to improve our vision, we only use correction for any distance where we need correction. And we use, like if you're nearsighted, you would use something weaker at the computer or for reading if you need it than for distance, right? And contacts, you tend to keep them in all day long, but they do give you that better peripheral awareness. So that's definitely an advantage there. And we're not talking about eye diseases today, but like glaucoma and retinitis pigmentosa are two eye diseases that really create that tunnel vision effect that really shrink your peripheral field, but your brain will still kind of fill in some of the peripheral, you just don't see it. And I had the glaucoma presentation on my channel here where you might not see the pedestrians on the edge of the crosswalk, 
because your brain just fills in the blanks, so to speak. But this is even more important if you have these eye diseases to really work on your or relax and really practice peripheral vision awareness. And then lastly, um, this is a picture of my eyes, but this is like quite some years old. I definitely have more wrinkles now. Um, but eye dominance can also affect your awareness of your periphery. So that's something interesting to notice. For instance, I'm right dominant and I always have more of a, like when I'm, when I'm paying, aware, when I'm aware of my peripheral field, I always feel more kind of a, almost like a bigger bubble on the right side than the left side. So this is something that can also make a difference. And of course, any vision acuity or any, like if you have a cataract in one eye or you have some other vision conditions and there's a big difference in your eyes, then obviously that can also affect your awareness of your peripheral vision differently on each side. But eye dominance is one of those things that we might not think so much about in terms of our awareness. So this is kind of the end of the slides before we, um, I show you some things, but being in a relaxed state, that's the prerequisite to having peripheral vision from our nervous system and also better central clarity. So let me stop the slide share and I will get back to my Zoom. So hello everybody. So I hope this was helpful. I thought it would be helpful to have some slides and have some visuals to kind of get this idea. So. Um, like I said, relaxation is key, and that's why our vision is best in the distance, because when our eyes diverge, we are relaxed, versus when we converge and we focus on something up close, there is more of an arousal of our nervous system. But again, it's not the same as total fight or flight, or you're being attacked, and now you're in a complete stress state. That's when your peripheral vision literally goes away. It's like it shrinks up, your pupils dilate really wide. So... Um, let me look at what else I wanted to share here. So yeah, that's basically the, the background. And so let's talk a little bit about how you can, things you can do to increase your peripheral vision. Obviously take your glasses off if you wear them or maybe wear contacts, but anything you can safely do. Don't do this while you're driving and you need glasses for driving. Do this when you are in a safe place because feeling safe is the first requisite for being able to relax. So if you don't feel safe, you won't be able to relax no matter what you do. And, and then really this, this idea of the open focus, you know, let your, like, let your attention move. You're still, again, your eyes are still pointing at something. So it's not like, you, you, you're, you know, unless you close your eyes, your eyes are still pointing at something, but you can, if you think of that tree or that forest, you can have your attention on one tree, but at the same time, you're aware of that whole, that whole space around you. And I think this works best in nature but you can practice this anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. I'm looking at myself on the computer right now, but I am also aware of my lamp and my water bottle and all this other stuff around me. So that's, that's one thing. And if you really struggle with that idea of open focus, close your eyes. And then again, I like the forest, but you don't have to use the forest, but close your eyes and now imagine maybe even barefoot, you're standing in the forest and I think we all have a good memory of how a forest looks like. And there's the trees are all around you. And you know there's trees behind you. You don't really see them physically with your eyes, but you see them. You see them with this awareness of your space. And it's more of a feeling in your body. It's more that proprioceptive sense than you're focusing on something. So that's a good way to use in meditation kind of not really focusing on like, okay, there's that tree, there's that leaf, there's all these things, but really that, that space around you, that big, big space. Um, so that's one idea that I like to use. And then you can also, you know, stimulate your periphery. So I have a second monitor here. Um, and maybe you have a setup similar, maybe you have several monitors when you're at work, for instance, because computers tend to do this for us, right? So I'm seeing myself with a delay. So I'm seeing my own movement on the right side. But if you have a second monitor, or even if you have a bigger screen, you can use a little GIF, you know, one of those little animated images. You can play a little, or have a little YouTube video like shrunk and put it like really tiny in the corner, um, especially your non, the side. If you do notice a difference with your awareness of your, your, your field, you know, like I described, I was always more aware of my right field. So maybe have a brighter light on the left. Maybe have something moving. Maybe move your second monitor to the left if you also notice, for instance, that your right side is just more, you're more present in that side. So add movement because in the outer periphery, we only see movement. 
So or light, just make it brighter. Movement is really great. Um, those are things that you can do. Um, you can use, you know, maybe you have a wind chime or, you know, you have, I mean, this thing doesn't, maybe you have this and the cat and then the cat will play with it and it will create some movement. So be creative, especially at the computer. It's really helpful to create some kind of movement. Maybe you have the sunlight coming through and it creates a flicker effect, but you do want to feel some kind of movement. It's, again, this is not just applying to computers, but this is where we usually really stare and focus and get that tunnel vision um, effect. So, you know, I ha have other things that I showed. Um, this was from uh, something, you know, from a party store. I mean, obviously you don't want to wear that all day, <laughs> even though it's fun, but this is also great, right? It stimulates my peripheral movement. I'm typing here and I'm aware of these kind of things floating around. So that keeps you more relaxed. So I know it looks silly, <laughs> but maybe there's other things you can use to kind of, and you probably wouldn't do that all the time, but you know, just noticing these things and not getting so into that sucked into that tunnel vision idea so this is is one thing um what else can you do let me look at my notes um okay and then we can also use this at night so night is a great time because remember the rod cells are the same ones that work at night so there's some something i learned from a vision teacher named kate Kalman at a vision conference and i think she learned it from someone else but this is something so this device it's basically a visor and I, I attached a straw to it with a little thing here. So one thing we can do at night, you can just night walk, period. But the point is that you really want to start using your peripheral vision. And what I see a lot happening is like, especially looking at the feet, looking at the ground the whole time, like, you know. So the idea of this pointer was kind of like you're keeping your attention. So it's kind of a, the idea with this was that you have a focal point. So you look at the bottom here that you have a focal point while you're doing the night walk so that you're not tempted to look down and you, you just relax focus. You're not staring at it. You just have a point that you're focusing on. And you know, you can, you want to have it in at like eye level so that you're not looking up or down. And in the, the beginning, you kind of, and we were on a meadow and it was uneven ground. You get, you're really careful. You're like, I'm afraid. And then suddenly your peripheral vision and your proprioception, you know, and again, maybe do this with barefoot shoes, not like really thick soles you will be amazed how much you're, you see in your periphery, not just with your eyes, but with your whole body. So that is a really great way to practice this. And again, you don't need this device, but the idea is that you're, that you're looking, that, you're, that you don't look around, that you're really keeping your vision kind of somewhere, you know, at a focal point that could also be further in the distance, that doesn't matter, but that you're not frantically trying to look on the ground and you really be amazed how much you pick up and how relaxed you get. So that's one thing you can do with night. Another thing that's interesting, um, you might've noticed this when you turn the light, let's say you're in a room without a window or this, it's all blocked off. You turn the light switch off. Initially you see it's all black. You're like, I can't see anything. And then slowly those rod cells, they, they like, it's like film developing. Think of the film developing when you've ever done, been in a dark room. First, you, you expose the paper and then you put it in the, in the chemicals and it's nothing. And then slowly the image pops up, right? I used to do that with my dad. It would have been his 92nd birthday today when he passed away from cancer a long time ago. So it's my, today is my dad's day. But we used to do this as kids. We would develop these photos and this is kind of how your night vision works. Slowly, slowly, you will pick up more and more and more things. And so this is another thing that you can explore with your dominance. Maybe you have some glow in the dark objects and you put them on each side, you know, maybe five, six feet away from you and you're standing next to the light switch. So the light is on and then you turn the light off and then you want to be, you want to look at the center and you have those objects, you know, on the sides and then notice you can count and notice when you see that first, like which one, maybe you see one side quicker than the other. So that's kind of a fun game to play. Like when do you pick up those objects? Another thing is there's obviously professional eye doctor visual field tests that they do, especially if you have a risk for glaucoma, um, there's machines, but you, can, but you can also kind of explore this on your own. And I'm not teaching you, this is not medical training. This is more for fun. If you do want to get a visual field test, then please go to an eye doctor and they can measure exactly your exact visual field in your periphery. But even just, and that's better when somebody else does it with you because you kind of know, but let's say you have highlighters, right? Or, you know, I have like different colorful post-it stickers here. They're pink and green and yellow and orange. 
And you know, so these kind of different colors that I have here, these are little hearts, I don't know if you can see it, but they are different colors. So I, maybe you, or maybe you do these and you don't know which one you pick. And now I can see myself in the camera, so that doesn't work, but I can look somewhere else. And now I'm using one of those and I'm bringing it into the, and I'm looking at a point straight ahead. I'm not looking at my screen and I'm slowly bringing it in. And like, at what point I would see this is orange. Okay, so orange, I was about here, right? I recognize it's orange. Some colors you might see sooner than others. And now I'm doing another one and I have to look somewhere else so I don't see the color. So I'm, you're bringing it into, and first of all, you know, first of all, when do you even notice the object? Like at what level? Ideally 180 degrees, we have peripheral vision. But at what time, when do you know, okay, now I see the object, which is really like I'm here, let's see, maybe I do it this way. So I see the object right here. So that's good for, but when do I recognize the color? You keep looking at straight ahead. Okay, pink. So pink took a little bit longer for me to see than orange. Right, so we have different, so this is a fun thing you can do. If you have a friend to do that, it's better because then you really don't know what they're gonna show you versus, you know, but I was hiding them behind my back. So, but this is a great way and I can always do that on top and on bottom. So that's another great way to, to improve your peripheral vision. Obviously, if you're in one of my courses or in one of my trainings, um, and it, oh, it's gone to the top. We've done these practices that I've learned from Mia Schneider, um, a vision teacher, in in, uh, in San Francisco School of Healing. So, you know, you can, you can, this is another great way to improve your peripheral vision is by blocking your central vision. So you can use these kind of, you know, post-it stickers and you literally, you block your central vision. So now you have the, well, the near, this is kind of the near middle periphery and you have the outer periphery. So this is a good way to do it. And you can walk around and maybe even do this on hikes or do it in the house, you can play ball games and toss the ball back and forth. So that's one way to do it, that's really fun. And I find a lot of my clients find it really relaxing because they have this strain in their central vision. So when you take the central vision away, obviously you want to be able to relax without, without doing this, right? But this is a great way to learn how to relax into the periphery and also open it up. It's, it's just literally blocking the central vision. And oops. I have to grab this. And if you've seen the, the, the episode with my friend, Irina Castle, she created this eyesight trainer. This is another way. This is something that you can, um, I don't have the link right now, but the link is in, it's, it's in my um, YouTube. But she created this thing where you have different, you know, this is uh, originally developed for athletes, but it's really great tool. So you have the, you can block your central vision this way. The advantage with this is that you also have some openness in the, periphery on top, which if you put the sticker on, you obviously don't have that. So this is a great tool to use. And this also comes with, um, and again, you don't have to buy this. You can do this all uh, inexpensively. And she also has these um, side occluders here where you just do, oops, I'm messing this up. But basically you can use, um, here we go. You can also do this with one side at a time. And again, this has some vision on top, on the side. So that's one way to do it. You can also use, um, these are simple dollar store sunglasses. I pop the lens out and I make the other side black. So this is, again, you have the frame here, but um, you now, this is another way. Now I can work on my left peripheral vision. So especially the non-dominant eye, maybe where you have less. So using occluders in my courses, I teach you how to use them for practices like specific vision practices with these. And it kind of opens up your peripheral field. Um, especially something like the sway, where you just rock from side to side, very relaxing for the nervous system. And then just notice like, wow, there's all this stuff on the side that I never paid attention to. So using occluders, using Irina's eyesight clarity trainer, using a, a block for the central vision, those are all great ways to improve your, improve your peripheral awareness. And maybe that's the first step that you do before you practice the open focus. Um, so to learn to really relax and then do that. But obviously we want to have, we don't want to run around with these devices. These are just tools for you to explore this bigger peripheral field. So let me look at questions. I'm looking on YouTube. Um, <laughs> my 10 year old is laughing at the head here. Um, oh yeah, okay. I'm just, I'm just seeing if there's any questions. Why do we have such a peripheral vision to be only to be able to detect movement in it? 
Well, here at Syrian, that's a great question. Think about our ancestors back in the millions of years ago or 10,000 of years ago. Peripheral vision is usually about threats. Nowadays, it's probably cars hitting you or something. But back in the day, if you were, um, if you didn't have good peripheral vision, you know, that predator would have eaten you alive. So the periphery is about movement because that's what we, when we see something moving, our attention, and you would look around and see, you, you wouldn't be like this. So movement is like, that's animals. Have you ever noticed a cat? I mean, I don't actually know about their peripheral field. I know they have great night vision, which we don't because they're nocturnal animals and they're predators. But if you move anything, they immediately spark the ears. So animals react the same way. They react to movement, especially in the periphery. A, a horse might, you know, um, get, what do you call it? When they buck up, but the horse might be startled by something moving on the side, right? Especially if it's, it's again, especially if you're anxious or nervous, you know, that might, that might make it worse. So let me see if there's any other questions here. But your peripheral vision, again, if you're like, the, I think they do put these blinders on horses um, so that they don't get distracted. You know, they don't get kind of, even though we have to be relaxed to see the periphery, like something like a horse might get distracted. And we do too, right? We get distracted too. We might get distracted by the periphery. So I'm not, what I'm trying to say is, you're not going to use open focus all day long. When you work, sometimes you're focusing on, you're mentally focused on something, you're you're aroused, you're paying attention, right? But you can still do as much as possible to have an awareness of your periphery, even though you're focusing on something, you're typing a letter or you're writing an email or you're looking at your phone. You know, have you seen people looking at their phone that literally run into lampposts? That's an example of where you're not using any peripheral vision. And so you want to build that skill of being aware even when you're focusing, but especially when you're like on nature walks, especially when you don't have to focus on something mentally. So, you know, so, so what do you call it? With that, with that mental attention, um, that's a really great time to practice this open focus, to practice this awareness. And blinking will help. Blinking actually slows down time. So that will also help you feel overall more relaxed. Okay, let me look if there's any questions on Zoom. And, um, oh yeah, there's a, there's a link. Thank you so much. I will put that in YouTube and just in case if you're interested, but again, you don't have to, you don't, Irina's eyesight trainer is fantastic, but you don't have to buy that. You can always use, you know, simple things like these cheap occluders that I made. Eye patches are different and I do use eye patches as well, but eye patches, obviously not a good tool to improve your peripheral vision because they block everything, including your peripheral vision. So eye patches are not recommended for this practice. They have a different purpose. All right, let me see if there's any other questions. I don't see any more questions on YouTube. And um, so yeah, then I'm gonna close this today. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, uh, Siriam is asking if acuity is 100% in central vision, how much is in peripheral vision? I cannot tell you exactly the acuity of all the exact peripheral because it's, you, I guess you can put an eye chart in there and can see how much you can read. You can test that. I don't know the exact numbers and it might vary from person to person, but the key is the mistake, the difference between open focus is that you're aware of that whole space, but you're not mentally focused on one thing or the other, right? You're, you're, I'm looking at my outside and I'm looking at my table, but I'm not like, oh, there's a table. Let me see if there's some tools on the table or if there's a, a, a bee on the table. I'm not doing that. I'm just, it's like more of a relaxed, uh, maybe you call it a drishti in yoga, focus and you're aware of that whole space, but it's while you're focusing at the same time and you're still aware of that space, but that's where your central focus. And when you do that open focus, you let your eyes move. You're not looking at, you're not focusing on one point the whole time. You let your eyes move around, but you're aware of everything around you, right? When you're focusing, ideally, you're also focusing and you're aware of things around you, but that's not open focus. That's like, I'm looking at a tree and I'm looking, oh, there's leaves. Oh, there, maybe there's a bird in the tree. So you're more interested in something that, you're, that you want to see better versus you just experience this whole space around you. So um, yeah, anyway, so Dennis, you're welcome. It's, I think there's an over stress about the central focus. So just practice this more than anything. And I think central clarity will come because it's easy and effortless. It's like your attention is moving around. All right, we're going to stop the YouTube live.
Thank you so much. Subscribe to my channel. Tell other people about my channel. Click the little bell that you get notified. I have not picked up the topic for next week. I will be teaching a session next week, very likely. And then on the week after, we have an amazing uh, guest that I'm very, very excited about, um, um, my friend Galina Denzel. And it's really um, basically that the topic is called Free Your Eyes from the Past to See Clearly. So we're going to talk a little bit about trauma, different kinds of trauma and somatic experiencing. So this is really, really powerful. That's on July 13th. And then next week, well, I will let you know as soon as I have figured it out. Um, so see you guys by YouTube. Again, share with your friends, subscribe to my channel and also on Instagram at Holistic Vision Coach. I'm also doing free trainings there, not as regularly as you on YouTube, but I do them.